This session is noun and verb quick dive. There is no need to try and follow this video in moment of inspiration. It's simply meant to provide you with a quick overview of the unique noun and verb method we use in this 3D design for fun and live course. We hope it demonstrates just how easy it is to design your own 3D objects in moment of inspiration. Enjoy! In this course, we learn how to combine the tools available in Moment of Inspiration to create 3D designs. We have divided these tools into two categories, nouns and verbs. Nouns are things. It is easy to identify the nouns from verbs in the Moment of Inspiration interface. All of the baseline nouns are located on palette 1. Nouns are further divided into two categories. All of the 2D nouns are on the tab labeled Draw Curve and all of the 3D nouns are located on the tab labeled Draw Solid. Nouns will always be our starting point for creating 3D objects in moment of inspiration. Verbs are actions. We always combine verbs with nouns. And all of the verbs are located on palettes 2 through 4. We select nouns and apply verbs to form new 2D and 3D nouns. Just as we combine multiple sentences to create paragraphs to communicate in our everyday life, we use a series of noun and verb combinations to easily build complex 3D objects in moment of inspiration. Example number one, creating a cup. We will first use a series of noun and verb combinations to create a cup. We always begin with a noun, in this case, the center circle. We next apply a verb. We'll use the verb extrude with a distance of 50. A single noun circle plus the verb extrude equals a cylinder. We will next apply another verb, inset, to cylinder, our new 3D noun. Going to the 3D view, we'll select the top of the cylinder. The noun cylinder plus the verb inset equals a cup. We used an inset wall thickness of 3 and a separate height of 48 millimeters. We next apply the verb fillet to the noun cup to make a more refined design. The solid cup noun plus the verb fillet creates a cup with a smooth rim. We have created a finished cup in just three noun plus verb combinations. Example number two, a finished part with holes for screws. Let's try another example using the same circle noun. We will apply the verb offset. The noun circle plus the verb offset equals two concentric circles. If we apply the verb extrude to two circles, we get a result that is different from applying extrude to a single circle. Two circles plus the verb extrude creates a new 3D object that has a hole in it. But what if we add more noun and verb combinations? We'll erase the solid and add a small circle. We will apply the verb circular array. To the small circle to create additional circles. The small circle plus the verb circular array equals multiple circles arranged in a circular pattern. We will now use all of the 2D circle nouns that we have created and apply an extrude to create a new 3D solid object. The eight circle nouns plus extrude equals a new solid noun a solid fixture with a center hole and six screw holes. To further refine this design, we can apply the verb chamfer to the new 3D noun we just created. The new fixture noun plus the verb chamfer equals a finished part with holes recessed for screw heads. At every level of the process, we simply selected a noun or nouns and applied a verb to create a new noun until we completed our desired design.
Let's go over a few characteristics of moment of inspiration's nouns. 2D nouns are known as curves. 3D nouns are known as solids. The solid we most use is the text noun. 2D nouns can be either closed curves or open curves. To this point, all the nouns we have used were closed curves. Closed curves enclose an area completely. The endpoints of closed curve touch. A good example of a closed curve is a circle. When we select a closed curve, the shortcut for closed curve appears in the property dialog in the upper right of the screen. With open curves on the other hand, the endpoints of the curve do not touch. There is a gap. Good examples of an open curve are the arc. and a line. When we click on an open curve, only the word curve appears in the upper right of the screen. By the way, version 4 added a very cool feature. If we click on a curve and click on the details button, a new dialog pops up. If we click on the calc button, the length of the curve is automatically calculated for us. And we can copy the value to the clipboard where we can use it to make a different curve that very same length. We simply copy and then select a different curve and use Control V to paste the value in that object's length text box. The arc and the line are now the same length, with little effort on our part. Both closed curves and open curves can function as profiles, paths, or rails. Let's create a new open curve helix noun that almost always functions as a path. We will use the verb sweep with the circle profile in the helix path to form a new 3D spring noun. But we are finished. We now wrap that spring using the line and arc path to demonstrate how easily we can create very complex designs using nouns and verbs. This time, we will use the flow verb. Flow was a very powerful and welcome addition to moment of inspiration. The flow verb lets us wrap objects around curves or 3D solids, and it is an amazingly easy way to create very complex and beautiful designs. Let's look at some other ways we use profiles and paths or rails. Example number three, using nouns as profiles and paths. Both types can be used as profiles or paths depending on the requirement of the verb being applied. Here we have two circle nouns. We will use both circles and apply the verb sweep. The small circle will perform as our profile and the large circle will perform as our path. The two circles plus the verb sweep equals a new torus. Example number four, applying different verbs to the same profile noun. The same profile can produce many different 3D shapes depending on the verbs and or paths with which they are combined. Let's try a few noun plus verb combinations. A circle noun plus tapered extrude verb with a minus value. A circle noun plus a tapered extrude verb with a positive value. a circle noun plus a pointed extrude verb. We have created three different solid nouns using a single 2D noun with different verbs. The term Boolean might be new to you, but union may be familiar. When we apply the Boolean union verb, we combine multiple objects into a single object. The three solid nouns we just created plus the Boolean union verb equals one new 3D noun. The new 3D solid noun plus the fillet verb equals a polished look.
Example number five. Adding nouns as paths. Let's go to the front view and try something new. We will first create a circle noun. Next, we will scale the circle in one direction to make it wider than it is tall, making it an ellipse. We now create a rectangle. We will use this rectangle to cut the bottom of the ellipse noun. Boolean diff is the command we most use for cutting or subtracting objects in moment of inspiration. Applying Boolean diff to the ellipse using the rectangle gives it a flat bottom. We now apply the offset verb to create a second ellipse inside the first. We offset at a value of 4 millimeters. We are going to use Boolean diff again, but this time we will cut the two ellipses with a polyline closed curve. We close the polyline loop. Select both ellipse curves. Click on Boolean diff and select the polyline. We have created a new closed curve profile. We will smooth the top edge using the verb fillet. Finally, we will apply the verb revolve to the new profile to form a smooth bowl. The variety of 3D designs that can be created using the revolve verb is limitless. Any open or closed curve can be revolved. While revolve is very cool, notice that there are two revolve methods in the revolve verb group. Let's erase our bowl to explore rail revolve. We first need to create the noun we will use as our rail. We will create a star polygon and use the custom option. We define the number of sides as 8 and size the new star. We want to smooth the corners, so we will apply the fillet verb. We experiment with the fillet value until we get the shape we want. Notice that the value 12 didn't work, so we'll try 11.5. That's perfect. We click on done. We now switch to the front view and make sure the new star is located at the bottom of the profile. If not, we use the align verb to place it where we want it. Now comes the fun part. We select the profile, click on rail revolve, select the newly created polygon, and define the axis for the revolve. That's quite a difference. The profile plus rail revolve and the star polygon rail create in a pumpkin shape. Let's turn it into a planter. An easy way to make this an interesting planter is to cut holes in the walls for plants to grow through. We begin the circle and use the vertical option. We use the 3D view to check the placement of the circle. That looks good. We then apply the extrude verb to create a column that penetrates the wall of the planter. We will name this column X to make it easier to select all the copies. Going to the top view, we use transform, array, circular, to create eight copies. We then select the planter and use boolean diff with all the cylinders named X to cut holes in the planter. All the holes are cut one time. We can now delete the circle. We will name the planter XX and hide it. We'll name the 2D nouns we use as profile and rail as YY and hide them. To make our new planter a bit more interesting, let's create a plant. We begin with a star polygon with the custom option. Next, we'll apply the fillet verb to round the sharp corners. Again, we will experiment with the fillet value until we like the result. That looks good. This will be the profile of our plant. Now we need a path to shape our plant. For that, we use the freeform line. We show the planter to help us shape the freeform line.
and click on Done. We can hide the planter. Selecting the profile, we click on the Construct tab and the verb Sweep. We select the freeform line as our rail and click on Done. We have one more step. We will change our ends value to pointy end. One branch of our plant is done. To make the complete plant, we'll go to the top view and select Transform Array Circular Showing our planter, we see a planter complete with a cactus-like plant growing from it. That is a lot more interesting than our original Revolve, but we can do a bit better. Version 4 of Moment of Inspiration introduced the twist verb. We will apply the twist verb to both planter and plant. We will twist our planter and plant around the vertical center axis. Twist allows us to determine the degree of twist we would like to apply. We'll use 30 degrees. Very, very, cool. As you've seen, we have been able to combine nouns and verbs to create several complex 3D objects in a very short period of time using very simple steps. This is why we call our approach to designing 3D objects with moment of inspiration, the noun plus verb method.